Hi everyone, we'll just uh, wait a couple of minutes for everyone to join the webinar and then we'll start around uh, three, four minutes uh, time. Thanks. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Model 25's webinar this morning on how best to pre prepare for Black Friday in 2024. Um, I'll just introduce myself first and we'll let the rest of the panellists also do so for themselves. I'm Luke. I am Head of Digital Optimization at Modo 25. Um, I've been here for three years now, but across a range of digital agencies across the north of England, ranging in B2B and B2B sales. Um, and yeah, that's me. Claudia, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Luke. So I'm Claudia. Um, I'm a Senior Programs Marketing Manager here at Money 25, specialising in affiliates. Um, I've been here for just over two and a half years now. And prior to that, I've kind of held a range of agency and also brand side affiliate roles. Kylie, do you want to go next? Yeah, hi, yeah. Um, I'm Kylie, SEO account manager here. Um, so yeah, I've been here around four years now. Um, and been in a couple of smaller agencies before that. So I've got um, a range of experience in different industries, um, looking at SEO strategy, keywords to use, technical setup, and that kind of thing. Cool. And I'm Tom, I'm head of PPC here at Modo25. So looking after the paid search team, but also paid social and affiliates as well. Um, I have over 10 years experience in both B2B and direct to consumer and yeah, looking forward to chatting about some Black Friday stuff today. So thanks guys. So I guess, yeah, just for context, Moda 25 is two businesses. We have the uh, hybrid agency services where we specialize in, in housing, all of the channels that we'll be discussing today around how you can get the best uh, out of them for Black Friday. We do also have Ask Bosco, which is our digital marketing AI platform, which helps and underpins all of that. Again, if you want any um, or are interested in either of these services, then you can, uh, uh, you can get in touch at the end of this webinar. So I guess the first thing that that, w that we've noticed this year is uh, just from various uh, pieces of data is that we are expecting uh, three and five adults to be planning uh, to make at least one purchase this Black Friday. Uh, that's uh, well, the official stat was 50, 59 percent. That's actually up from uh, 51 percent last year, which is um, an interesting thing. I guess, Tom, mainly from yourselves, from a from a page search, search perspective. Does that surprise you at all? Um, no, I think. We've seen, for, especially for retailers, like the summer was particularly slow compared to maybe the last three or four years. Um, and I think that means customers potentially have a bit more spending power. They didn't quite spend as much as they did in summer. Also means I think people are expecting deeper sales. What in, Now we're getting towards Black Friday. I think customers are expecting maybe retailers to be overstocked and have deeper discounts than normal. Good. Yeah, I think as well, what's quite interesting for me is if I'm if I'm correct, last year we didn't quite a lot of um, people hadn't been paid yet, 
Whereas this year, I think obviously they they, they will hopefully they will have been paid, so uh, that should obviously improve performance. I guess on that as well, um, one of the interesting stats that we got from one of our partners, which is Erwin, is how many sale uh, sales used a voucher code last year. Now, Claudia, do you know what that is? Um, I mean, in affiliates, it's always kind of very high um, voucher, so I'm going to kind of go with maybe kind of around like 65 percent ish um, in terms of how many to be used. So it was a little bit lower at 56%. But again, I think that's super interesting and shows like the the importance of affiliates, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, like with affiliates, it's so competitive um around Black Friday. If when people are on vouchers, like say are looking for a strong deal. So if you can discount and promote, it's really kind of been, it can be really beneficial for you. Otherwise, you can kind of be lost with all the brands that can offer high discounts. Um, that's not to say um that kind of Black Friday is only for brands that can discount. We do have a lot of kind of our clients who across the year potentially might not want to participate in being live on voucher sites, but over Black Friday, they do see that importance because there's just so much noise um, around kind of, you know, loads of retailers offering loads of discounts. If you're not offering them, then can you go really not as competitive in the space? Cool. And is it just uh, Airwin that you can use or is there any other um, partner sites as well that you can use? Um, so it was just the network. So there's multiple different yes. networks that you can use. Um, and then kind of main kind of voucher sites that we see kind of work really well in Black Friday would be the likes of kind of voucher codes at Cody UK, um, codes at Cody UK, Savu, Hot UK deals, um, kind of all the major UK sites. Cool. One of our partners is I am I am RG. So Tom, do you, do you want to take this and just share with the audience what what we found from last year? Yes, yeah, so there was some interesting data uh, out from IMRG recently, which talks about, I guess it's what people have always known or thought, but this is the kind of data to back this up. So the data shows, you know, quite clearly that sales are getting earlier every year. I think, you know, there's talk about originally it was just Black Friday, then it's Black Friday week, and then it was the whole of November. And the data shows that it kind of is the case. If you're looking three weeks out, um, we're starting to see quite a lot of sales beginning to start already. Um, and especially maybe two weeks before it, it's a lot higher than it used to be. And actually Black Friday itself, the, the amount of discounts hasn't really changed that much. Um, <clears throat> but I thought it was also quite interesting, but also difficult for the consumer is uh, the sales types have changed. So before maybe sort of 2021, it used to be a lot of flat discounts. So, you know, 10% off whole site, 20% off whole site, that kind of thing. Now it's a lot of up to, which is which is very ambiguous because you get things like up to 50%, up to 60%, and maybe that's off a couple of products, but then the rest of the products are 10%. Um, so there's been a big shift away from that sort of flat rate discounting to more up to discounting, which looks more flashy on the surface, but for the end user is, is more difficult to find the good deals. Um, and what's also interesting alongside that is the discount rates themselves or the amount of discount offered hasn't really changed. So those flat rates have given way to up to, but actually the amount people are saving is hasn't really changed year to year. Um, and then across channel and investment, it's, it's still Google Ads, which is receiving the biggest investment increases across the Black Friday period and across November, um, which is... Yeah, I guess a double-edged sword because obviously people see that as their their biggest area of return and their biggest chance to to push their business, but also it makes it the most expensive period to spend. I think we'll go into some of the questions later about pitfalls to avoid um, over that period because obviously with everyone being quite aggressive on Google Ads at this time, that's that's going to have an impact on your performance. Cool, awesome. Um, yeah, so I guess um, thanks for that, guys. Um, what we've done over the last couple of weeks is get quite a few questions from our clients, the rest of the team, um, and, and externally as well. So we've got some of these now that we'll just go through again at the minute. If there is an at the end, if there's we have five or ten minutes spare and you do have any questions yourself, the team are more than happy to answer those. So I guess the first one that's come up is is Black Friday for uh, only for brands who heavily discount. So I don't know, Claudia, do you want to start with that and then Tom, you can follow up? Yeah, of course. Um, so as I mentioned, it is so competitive around kind of Black Friday for a lot of brands. So if you can heavily discount or kind of discount within your margin, 
you'll be expecting a much greater turn than brands that can't. However, we are starting to see a lot of brands kind of be anti-Black Friday. So it started a couple of years ago with Lush, who actually um, kind of said we're not participating in Black Friday at all, um, due to kind of overconsumption and things like that. They, they felt it didn't really align with their brand. Also, Adenola, um, popular active wear brand, they've see, they've actually, the past couple of years, haven't participated in Black Friday either. Um, so it is kind of a trend that we are seeing brands kind of move away from have the discounting on Black Friday or even participating at all. Ones that kind of do have very loyal customers who will buy all year round and not just shop around and look for a discount. However, if you are able to discount and if you do want kind of Black Friday to be really successful and if kind of a lot of your marketing activity and kind of targets are centered around that period, then it will be beneficial to discount just to remain competitive. Um, but if you can't, and kind of if Black Friday isn't so much of a focus um, for you, then kind of you can opt out or just kind of provide smaller discounts. Um, it kind of does depend on the brand. Um, but yeah, we are kind of seeing that movement, um, which might even get even more prevalent now with kind of overconsumption and sustainability with brands actually kind of turning away from Black Friday. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, and I also like to sort of segment up like the, what I would say is like two different types of retailer here as well. So you've got retailers who sell other products, products made by other people, and then you've got the retailers or direct consumer brands that are just selling their own brand. And I think there's two different approaches here. So if you are selling other products, not your own products, um, and you are price competitive on Black Friday or through November, then absolutely be aggressive. If you don't feel like you are going to be price competitive, you can't lower your margins anymore, you're not going to be the cheapest on the market, I would actually say don't spend, pull, pull back your marketing budget because this is going, like I said, this is going to be the most expensive point of the year and people will be clicking around, taking up your marketing spend, um, but they will shop for the best price. And if you're not the best price, then you're just going to be absolutely killing your, your overall margins and your efficiency. If you're a direct consumer brand and you're selling your own product, then I think what's really key here is is mind share and basically making sure that your your brand is the first brand that people come to on Black Friday or whenever your sales period starts. There's going to be a lot of noise. There's going to be a lot of brands out there. You want to make sure that they're thinking of you first and they're like, ah, oh, yes, it's it's the big sale day. I want to go check out this brand first and see what deals they've got on because I really like this brand. So therefore, you know, you want to be ramping up your activity in advance of your sale, running some, you know, upper funnel activity, whether that's display, TV, whatever you want, um, to try and capture some of that that share of the customer's mind. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, cool. Um I guess one of the other questions that we've been asked is when should you set your Black Friday, uh, Friday pages live? So Kylie, as our SEO expert, would you like to take this question? Yeah. Um, and I mean, ideally yesterday, but <laughs> yes, that's not possible anymore. So as soon as possible, um, if you do have a page that you used last year, use that one, go back to it and don't kind of create a new one, just update it if there's any mentions of 2023 in there, get them updated to 2024, um, things like that. Um, but yeah, basically we we recommend using the same page year over year. So then any authority the page builds um, is kept and carried over each year to just make sure you, you still stand a better chance at ranking for them top level product plus Black Friday terms that are relevant to you. Um, but with using one page, I'd say you obviously want to kind of draw attention to it again. So using internal linking, so for the period, kind of adding it into your main navigation, maybe a banner across the home page, across other collection pages in some of the existing sale pages that you do have live year round, um, just to make sure we've kind of increased the number of internal links to it at this time and um, got it up there for people to see. So anything else that you think the page should technically look like? I know you just mentioned the internal links, but anything else specifically that we need from an SEO perspective on there? Um, so the main things would be just you your usual kind of on-page SEO optimization techniques. So making sure kind of you've got your keywords in your title, your headings, uh, making sure you've got some unique content on that page. 
and it's going to be referred to kind of keywords that are based around what you're selling plus Black Friday, Black Friday deals, um, however you're seeing people are searching around your specific industry for Black Friday. Yeah, I think it's super interesting as well from my side. Uh, we've done a lot of testing on merchandising and like similar to what Tom was saying as well, putting your own brands higher up the funnel, uh, higher up the page, I think can obviously just give you a little bit bang, better bang for buck. So it's all about what, what you can make the best margin on, I suppose, as well. How, oh, can't even get my words out. How do I set my budge, uh, budgets for Black Friday? So Tom, I don't know if you want to start and then the rest of the team can chip in. Yeah, definitely. So... So the easiest way to do this, if you have it, is to look at your historical data. So if you have data from 2023, 2022, 2021, look back at how much you spent, how much revenue you made, you know, was it, did it hit your efficiency targets? Were you, were you, were you overly efficient? Uh, to, um, did you miss your targets? In which case, you know, then you can start to get an idea of how much, how much you can spend. Um Typically, if you don't have um, previous years to look at, and this is your first year doing a Black Friday, um, then I would be looking more at um, expected traffic increases on the on your keywords. So that might give you an idea of of expected, you know, traffic over the next month. So uh, maybe plug in some of your top keywords into Keyword Planner. Um, see if the, you know are they expected to double, triple. You know it's not unheard of for people to spend you know four times their standard daily budget on a Friday. So um, <clears throat> bear that in mind. Make sure you've set your budget cap. So you know across across Google. Make sure you've got the right budgets in across um, Facebook. You know all your marketing channels where you can preset a daily budget as well. Um, and yeah, just you look definitely lean on seasonality you know what conversion rate changes happened what what was the aov change did people add more things to basket and use that to sort of calculate right okay so you know our conversion rate was 30 percent higher for example the basket value was 40 percent higher because people added more things because they were cheaper and use that to really understand how efficient and how much you can spend on the day yeah, definitely. It's super interesting as well, like you said, about the ALVs baskets. Like we've done lots of product recommendation stuff with, uh, with multiple partners. And it's a really, really important time to get that right, I think, more than anything else. Claudia, for, from yourselves, what's the best thing to do from an affiliate's perspective, do you think, budget-wise? Yeah, um, so first thing I'd recommend is definitely start thinking about your budgets quite early on. So you'll find that a lot of affiliate placements actually get booked up towards the end of Q3. Um, so I kind of recommend in Q3 having a look kind of if you participated in Black Friday last year, how kind of your affiliate program um, performed, kind of what budgets you had available then, and then kind of take that forward into the year that you're looking at. Um, kind of make a plan in, as well in terms of looking at kind of your top publishers and um, kind of how much budget you want to allocate with each of those as well. And if there are any additional partners potentially that you want to look at and um, exposure for the first time as well, um, then kind of start reaching out to partners and see what's available. A lot of them will kind of send you their media packs. So you'll be able to see exactly what you can get booked in and kind of what price are available. Always worth as well, kind of trying to see if you can kind of get anything discounted. So if you book kind of for the whole quarter, can there be any discounts you can get? Also, if you can flex your commission um, as well, even higher for kind of key sites, can they actually then offer a discount on any tenancy for you as well? Um, and then just kind of keep in mind as well, if you are increasing commission costs, how that will affect kind of your overall budget as well. If that kind of budget is taken from the same pot as any flat fee placements as well. But definitely kind of the wonky takeaway would be start planning it quite early um, and like, you know working out exactly how much budget you'll have available and then kind of get case studies and you know potential lift stats from publishers as well um, so then guide kind of basically what you can get booked in for the quarter. So if anyone, I know we were talking about this earlier this morning, if anyone hasn't done anything from an affiliate's perspective yet, is it too late or is there something we can do? Um, not too late, but it just a lot of the kind of big publications, um, like you no know, top cash back batch because dot uk, will be pretty much booked up now for the you know especially for Black Friday week. But there is you know there will potentially still have placements available outside of that key period, and smaller publishers as well will you know will potentially still have exposure available in Black Friday week, but. Definitely kind of just something just, you know, to make sure that kind of it is on your radar kind of a bit earlier on than, than other channels because um, it is something that potentially does need a bit more planning around. 
Cool. Tom, very polite. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, one thing I was just going to say as well is on a Google Ads point of view, something to remember is they've moved everyone to invoicing. Um, so whereas before you might have a flexible limit on your card, you now have a fixed invoice amount. And if you're expecting to go over three, four times your usual spend, then make sure that your invoice amount is higher than that or your finance team is prepared to pay the invoice faster because you have a 30-day window to pay your invoice with Google Ads. Make sure your finance team is ready to pay off the invoices faster than that window um, or speak to your Google rep and see if you can get your invoice limit increased over Black Friday because... Yeah, what you don't want is like a, a billing disaster on a Black Friday over your peak period. Yeah, three three o'clock on Friday, not the not the ideal. So <laughs> yeah, good. Um, I guess one of the other questions that we get asked quite a lot, my, uh, you and I, Kylie, is what should you do with your Black Friday page for the rest of the year? So what do we recommend from that perspective? Yeah. Um. So yeah, as I said before, a little bit. Obviously, we want to be using the the same page year on year but obviously you don't really need users to be finding it at any other time of the year other than kind of in this month leading up to it so we'd recommend kind of keeping it there keeping it live not redirecting it unpublishing it anything like that but just removing the majority of the links to it so any of these prominent ones we've put in the main navigation on the home page etc to get rid of those you can still leave a link to it somewhere deeper in the site from like some of your existing sales pages um but like we said we just don't need it to be found the rest of the year so it's fine to just exist back there until we're ready to link it up again um you know around october time next year um but what what you could do is make a few changes on the page so for the few users who do somehow land on the page for the rest of the year we can still make it a little bit more useful um kind of updating some of the page content to explain that the sales ended, keep an eye out for the upcoming year's sales, um, change all the messaging to be, I guess, after this year, as soon as it's Jan 25, we can start to say, keep an eye out here for Jan for 2025, Black Friday deals, and add in like a call to action to maybe an email sign up and things like that, um, so that the page is just a little bit more useful for users, redirecting them to existing sale pages for now. Um, and things like that and I guess one of the things we get asked a lot Kylie is around the the link building side of things for Black Friday is that something that we recommend or is it something that we uh, suggest putting that effort elsewhere yeah um so with link building around Black Friday you will kind of probably pick up a lot of natural links around Black Friday um just if you have your pages optimized with your sales on you know from publications deal sites forums kind of people sharing your pages about if they found a deal um but it would be worth also identifying some sites to reach out to to get listed who may be kind of formulating top deals for black friday style blogs um obviously the most relevant to your industry as possible um and you can do this by looking into kind of links that competitors have to their black friday pages um using tools to do that um but you can also look at any of your affiliate activity and um, kind of promotion with affiliate links. It'll be quite popular around Black Friday as well, but it all kind of helps to get your site out there mentioned and linked to SEO wise too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Anything to add from the rest of the guys or happy free to move on? All good. Good stuff. Awesome. So what keywords to target for Black Friday? Again, Kylie, just to give you a little bit of a break, Tom, do you want to start? And then, Kylie, we can finish up from an SEO side of things. Yeah. So when it comes to keywords, I guess there's, well, this this is your key opportunity to really push search. Um, obviously, shopping is going to be highly competitive. So shopping being Pmax now, really. Pmax is going to be highly competitive. You're going to see your price up against your competitors' prices, and it's just going to be a battle on on pure price, basically. And you know, as as whoever has the cheapest rate, including delivery, is is going to win that battle. But your search terms and your your search based ads are where you can really start to differentiate yourself if you do have something else to offer. Um, so that's where you can get across your core messaging. Um. So in terms of keywords, it's 
obviously it's going to vary depending on what you're trying to sell um but make sure that you do have broad keyword coverage at least on your top terms now i know broad has been you know an issue for some people over the last few years but especially in the last 12 months broads a lot broad keywords are a lot more effective than they used to be um especially with Google smart bidding and um, yeah, the changes Google have been making to broad. So make sure you've got broad coverage because that will pick up all those long tail terms that you maybe used to be able to have on exact, which are now blocked because of low search volume. Broad is going to help pick those up. It's the only keyword type that uses external signals as well. So your phrase and your exact don't get as much data to match them to a customer as your broad keywords do. Um, so there's an advantage to using broad keywords. So my, yeah, my top tips is make sure you've got coverage on broad for your top terms and make sure that you've got your key messaging in your search ads, because that's the only way you're going to get this across, uh, across Black Friday. Um, because yeah, Pmax is going to be a pure battle of price. And then what, what about yourself, Kylie, what keywords should we be targeting now and then throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, um, so basically for Black Friday pages, we just want to look at kind of whatever you sell broadly plus Black Friday and doing a bit of keyword research behind them. Depending on how many different categories, products, brands you sell on site will depend how many Black Friday pages you need. So quite a small site that's just like, I don't know, a, a shoe retailer might just be able to get away with one Black Friday page to target kind of Black Friday shoes, boots, trainers deals because the SERP's all showing the same kind of results. But a larger retailer, more of a department store that has very distinct categories, um, you know, like clothing, furniture, etc., and then stocks a lot of different brands as well. You can do a bit of keyword research behind each of those brands, each of those categories, plus Black Friday to see which ones are worth building out. Um, and every time, I guess, we're led by what is shown on the SERP at the minute as well. So even though you find a bit of search volume behind it, if the terms are being recognised by Google as very similar, um, for example, in the maybe in the shoe retailer example of shoes on Black Friday versus trains on Black Friday, seeing the same sort of results there, you can probably just merge them into one page rather than um, have both. But yeah, other than that, it's just then about having these keywords within kind of your main on-page elements, your titles, your headings, um, optimizing things like your meta description that will be on the SERP, not necessarily for the keywords, but updating key references like the dates. Again, using your pages year on year from 2023 to 2024, updating any of your USPs in there to get people to click on your results over someone else's. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'd say. Cool. Awesome. And then I feel like we've kind of already talk, touched on this a little bit more, Claudia, but how can you get publishers engaged now ahead of Q4 if you haven't already? Yeah. Um. So key part of this is communication. So as soon as you've got kind of any of your offers um, approved, just make sure that you kind of send these to all of your key publishers and also especially those that you've got exposure books in with just to make sure that your brand is kind of front of mind. As I mentioned, there'll be a lot of noise. Um, so you want to make sure that kind of everything is set up as kind of far in advance as it can be um, with partners, especially if we're booking exposure and a lot of the time they'll need to know what the offer will be in advance. Um, and then just making sure kind of, you know, in the run up to Black Friday and especially on Black Friday that everything on those publisher sites is kind of as it should be. So all the offers are correct, um, all the cash rate rates are correct, just kind of do a bit of a sense check. Um, and in terms of, you know, just make sure they're engaged, as mentioned, just kind of make sure that you're communicating with them, especially your top kind of 10 to 15 partners, just making sure you maybe have kind of a quick call with them just ahead of Q4 to see if they need any, any additional creative from you or kind of, you know, anything extra from your side, just to make sure that you can both kind of work together to ensure it's as successful as it can be. Cool. Um. So I think that's all from like some of the general questions we've got. We do have some stats as well, just following up in terms of top sectors from Black Friday Uplift last year. I guess electronics uh, is in there twice, ironically, but like electronics, health and beauty uh, and home and garden are some of the all, all of the areas, I guess, where we're expecting good uplift this year. I guess we've got some key takeaways at the end, but I'm conscious of time. I guess, does anyone in the uh, webinar have any questions that they want the team to answer before we go through some key takeaways? 
I can't see anything, by the way. So I think there are a couple of questions that I can read out uh, if that would be useful. Um, so I, I'll just read the top one first. So uh, we talked a bit about brand building and awareness ahead of Black Friday. What are some of the most effective strategies to increase visibility without relying heavily on discounts? Um, so I think that's mainly a question for me, uh, even though I've read it. So I'll I'll pick that one up. So so I think the the things if you're selling your own brand and you want to win that mindshare battle, some of the things that we see work really effectively is is some lead gen. So whether you know you want to use like paid social um, is a good is a good chance for this. So like Meta, Instagram, um, run some lead gen, maybe with like a small giveaway or something like that. So. Uh, you know, like a win, win a bundle, win this product, win a certain a cash prize, a cash voucher, that kind of thing. If you sign up to our Black Friday mailing list, um, because then that not only does it remind people to look out for your brand, you know, they're interested in winning the prize. They're then on your mailing list. So you, you're in their inbox on the day before the day, reminding them that the your deals are going ahead or your products are still available and that kind of thing. So that's quite a a cheap and effective way to run some sort of like it's not quite brand awareness but you know it's, it's more up a funnel and lead generation um which which is like a really effective way to do that obviously if you've got big budgets you know and you want to run um some high-end stuff then you, you know things like connected tv um can be really effective because you've got more measurement you've got more targeting you can use your email lists to target people through connected tv um or yeah your standard sort of um remarketing display as well so when you've you've obviously had a lot of customers in the build up they visited the site make sure you're retargeting them with display um you know you could be using dv360 you could even use the gdn i don't often recommend gdn um but if you use the remarketing aspect of that just to target people who've been to the site but not purchased as well just to try and push them over the line um, so yeah, th those would be some of my top tips for yeah visibility before the big day. Good stuff. Um, do we have any more questions, Tom? I can't see can't see them. Uh, yes. Um, let's pick out another one. This is quite a good one actually because I think it's for everyone. How do you recommend ensuring that there's some synergy between PPC, SEO, CRO, affiliates mm -hmm. during Black Friday? How do you best avoid overlap, make them work efficiently together? I don't know who wants to take that one first. Do you want to go first, Luke? Yeah, I guess for me, it's, I mean, it goes without saying, talk talk to the teams. Like, you've got to get together and, and speak to one another. I think we've all already discussed, like, kind of some of the strategies that we deploy across those channels. But I think the most important thing for me is making sure we're sending people to the right place. I think that sounds really really obvious but you know like if somebody is uh, in the the fun one uh, maybe a high, higher intent to purchase do we need to send them to a product page whereas if it's somebody who's yes i want to participate in black friday but i haven't maybe necessarily decided what i want to purchase yet like similar to what kylie was saying earlier like can we have multiple uh collection pages for black friday which gives people that option and i guess that's the the best way to, from a CRO and testing perspective, is frictionless. The, uh, the uh, as as little friction as possible is is the the most beneficial. So that's what I would recommend. I don't know if Kylie, you want to follow up with that. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I'm going a little bit wider than Black Friday would do this anyway. But I guess like SEO and PPC teams getting together as well to discuss, especially with budgets going so high on Black Friday for things. If there's some of the really expensive terms that you'd love to be visible for on ppc but you don't want to spend all that money is there anything we can do seo wise to kind of be visible for the type of terms you want in to see um and then also about affiliates i discussed earlier a bit of an overlap with link building and affiliates so tied in with seo so yeah kind of joining up that um plan and coming up with kind of the organic side of the plan for who would just want to reach out to anywhere, but discuss it also involving the affiliates team. Can we get affiliate links in here or is it just the standard organic links that we're going after for these publications? Yeah. Claudia? Yeah, thank you, Kylie. So following up from that, that is something that um, 
what Kelly mentioned is something that we do kind of try to do with clients as well. So say if we're sending out like a PR press release, we'll kind of try and include, we'll include if we run kind of an affiliate program for that brand as well, kind of a link to join the affiliate program that way as well. So that way we can kind of have synergy between kind of organic PR and also affiliates where in the publication they have a choice whether to include the organic link or an affiliate link. Um, and kind of all of that will just kind of help with the site's SEO as well. Um, but yeah, like Luke mentioned, just making sure that kind of all the teams are coherent. So having like a Black planning, Black Friday planning session with all channels where you kind of sit down, right, this is, these are what our targets are for affiliates, this is what our targets are for PPC, SEO, this is kind of how we want to achieve that and um, kind of how we can create that one kind of coherent strategy, making sure that kind of all the messaging as well is quite consistent across different um, channels as well. So if we're kind of running an offer, making sure kind of the kind of wording is quite consistent across um the different channels just to make sure it look it doesn't look too kind of segmented as well um kind of you know the customer journey is kind of more um like circular as well and tom from you yeah i think i think a lot of the key things have been said but i think just then the that on the day monitoring as well is quite useful so chances are you've probably got you know a list of um seo keywords that you rank highly for uh, what i would suggest doing is is checking how where those are on the day and seeing if any competition have popped up maybe on from an ads point of view i think as as your competitors spend more they obviously have higher visibility they might where they maybe weren't once appearing uh above your organic listings they might be on the day so keep an eye on that and be ready to turn on some of those keywords that you maybe had off before because organic had them covered and vice versa. You know, if you see uh, certain terms where, you know, organics, the only listing uh, and you're number one, then save some cash as well and, and, and turn, turn your ads off really. Um, I think we've got time for one more question and then we'll just go through our key takeaways and then we should, we should wrap up. So do we have any more? Is that it? Yes, we have. an couple but I, I quite like this one so i'll go with this one um what steps can brands take post black friday to ma maintain momentum and continue to drive traffic and sales i mean I, i'm happy to go again and we'll go go for yeah, this uh, yeah. I th I, for me again it's looking through that data i know there's obviously the the, the joys of ga4 and the data lag so we'll have to wait maybe a little bit later than what we normally do but even if you're in uh shopify look through that shopify data to understand what's selling what's not selling and then take that forward um, I think there's lots of things, again, in terms of merchandising, really looking at your delivery strategy as well, in terms of like, is having a next day delivery beneficial? Is it not? Is it better to go Royal Mail, DPD, Yodel, whoever? Um, and, and, and lots of functionality like that. I guess the best and worst thing about Black Friday from a CRO and AB testing perspective is you get lots of traffic. So you can see and, uh, and, and see different threads, I guess. The downside is it's unnatural traffic or what you'd not normally get or a lot of more people again onto the start three and five people are looking to participate in, in black friday they might not normally be people who shop at your website so it's an opportunity but also be careful with the data is what i would say yeah i i would think yeah the data and this is one of the biggest mistakes i see retailers do is is not having a follow-up plan for the customers that they win during black friday so this is going to be your biggest influx of new customers throughout the entire year you can have paid the most money for them at probably the least margin for them so you've probably got big revenue numbers but you've probably got low profit numbers across the week uh, or even the month and it's not having a, a follow-up plan to utilize these customers so if they're just going to fall into a regular email list that you use for all your standard customers, that's probably not going to cut it. Um, they they will probably lapse. You know, the data that we've seen shows like a 95% lapse rate on Black Friday customers and they never come back to your site ever again after that. So they come for the best deals and then they never re-engage. Um, so what you need to be doing and what you need to be looking at is how do we make sure those customers come back um do we offer them you know some some discounts that are unique to them maybe some voucher codes because they made their first purchase creating a unique funnel for those customers to make sure that they aren't just wasted spend basically because yes it's great to have that big revenue figure on the day but also you want long-term profit and growth for your company, I presume. And therefore, you know, 
re-engaging those customers and not just losing them after you've given them a good deal is, is going to be key to success for the rest of the year. Claudia, Kylie, any, any feedback? Yeah, from my side, I would just say kind of continue to keep publishers engaged and so to make sure they're aware of kind of any new product launches, any offers. Also kind of make sure that outside of Black Friday, you're look, working with kind of other affiliate partners like influencers, content creators, CSS partners, so that kind of other, you know, voucher sites will form part of the strategy, but kind of outside of Black Friday, they won't be kind of the majority um, of your revenue drivers. Um, but yeah, just kind of make sure that publishers are kept engaged, that customers are engaged, that you're being competitive in this space with kind of cashback rates and, um, you know, kind of building brand awareness through content as well um, and influencers. Kylie? Um, yeah, I guess SEO-wise would just be back to kind of your non-Black Friday strategy, like the always-on long-term SEO strategy. Um, so just making sure we're keeping things up to date, I guess, a bit like Luke said, taking, making sure you look at the data um, and take into account that it was Black Friday. This is why a lot of the time year-on-year -year comparisons can be a lot better than just month on month to take into account seasonality for SEO. Um, so yeah, expecting to see a bit of a drop there, but making sure you're going back to your data and see, right, it's from it's the the Black Friday page that's seen the drop. It's expected, kind of we can compare it again November next year to this year, and that'll be the most fair comparison. Um so yeah, that's that's kind of it from me. Just going back to the the always on stuff, I guess the next period that comes up is making sure your all your gifting pages are ready for Christmas as well. So that'll be the the next big thing after that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Cool. So our key takeaways obviously um are on screen right now. I don't know if everybody wants to discuss these um one each or um yeah, I mean We'll, we'll obviously share this round for everyone that attended. It'll be available. Um, my key takeaway is something that I've mentioned throughout this, which is monitor prices, competitiveness. Make sure that you have the best deals on the market, or if not, you're pulling back on the spend because it is just going to be wasted spend. It's going to be your most expensive time of the year. If you're more expensive, your conversion rate will probably be its lowest point of the year. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on that, you know, the software out there, which, um, you know, if you want to email us, ask about some recommendations, we can, we can provide some of those, but the software out there that'll help you monitor your price competitiveness as well. So yeah, utilize some of those features and, um, yeah, stay on top of it throughout the day. Cool. Um, from my side, as mentioned, it would just be kind of forward planning. So making sure that you've kind of got your budgets, you've got your offers, you've kind of got the commission rates you can flex it to and the cashback rates you can flex it to kind of a couple of months in advance just to give you time to kind of work out which affiliate partners you'd like to work with how much can allocate to each of them and then ensure that kind of you get that booked in if that Friday is something you want to participate in um just because it can it can get very saturated and very booked up very quickly um kind of some affiliate partners as well won't even let you on board in Q4 some have like a complete block off um so if you're not live with them before Q4 and you want to book exposure and with them you won't be able to so kind of start looking maybe in Q2 if there are partners that you want to on board with for Black Friday and then in Q3 those that you're on boarded with start looking at kind of what placements you can get booked in with them and then finally, from you, Kylie, it's the evergreen pages, right? Yeah, just making sure that your pages are evergreen so they can be reused again year after year and retain their authority. Um, so, yeah, we can add kind of the dates to title, H1 each year and update those. But for the actual URL, it's better to just have kind of a slash Black Friday page and not have the date within there. Um, makes it easier to, to use year after year. Awesome. Cool. Right, I think that's all from us today. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining, I suppose. Um, if there is any additional questions in the chat, that well, what we can do is take them offline and the team can can answer those for you. Um, equally as well, if you're interested in any of the services at Modo25, I believe you can email us at the channel, so if it's ppc at modo25.com or vice versa for CRO, SEO and affiliates. Uh, and uh, well, whoever is part of that channel will get in touch um, and, and help discuss Black Friday. But yeah, thank you very much for everyone for attending. Thanks, everyone.
Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye.